their their pitchers they they were able to maximize all their pitchers' strengths. I think the perfect example of this is Logan Webb. Yep. Where he was in 2020, forcing fastball slider guy, right? Throwing the fastballs up in the zone. Now this is generally the put in quotes the progressive way of pitching, right? Mm-hmm. Fastballs up, tunneling with the breaking balls down. Yeah. That just wasn't working for him. It wasn't how he would maximize his skill set. Over the offseason, he picks up a sinker, uh, a very horizontally based changeup, and now he works horizontally, sinker, slider, changeup, completely different type of pitcher. He still gets whiffs at a decent rate because the sinker and the changeup are, you know, wipe out pitches, mm-hmm. but he also is leading the league in ground ball percentage. Yeah. I think he's a top 15 starter in baseball. He's been that good. He's been incredible this year. I mean, Logan Webb has been awesome. I mean, this Giants pitching staff, not only that, but I was looking at Gosman, and I, I feel like we may have overrated him even, like, going into this year. Um, I remember we did that free agency video, and... Yeah, I remember you were very high on him. And I was really high on him, but I looked at his stats today, and before this season, like, he really, like, his best season was, like, a 120 ERA+, plus, and that was, like, twice. And the other seasons were just horrendous. So he really hadn't been like that good until this season, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, I he think really he's been he's been more of a two pitch pitcher this year. I think yeah. he's using his as curveball and changeup a lot less. He's really been fastball splitter, mm-hmm. and I think that's another thing the Giants have done. Right? So I think they've been maximizing their pitchers, making a lot of good uh, a lot of good adjustments. Same with the bullpen too. A lot of guys who have just come out there have been really good. Yeah, and then also um, hitting. I mean, you mentioned the platooning. That's a big part of it. Mm-hmm. The other thing, there's a great uh, there's a great graph tweeted by a guy named Max Bet, Choice underscore Fielder on Twitter, mm-hmm. and it's about uh, differences in exit velocity. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has it charts like between 2019 and 2021. It charts every player in the majors, yeah. and then it highlights where all the giants are, and pretty much all of them are over zero. And if you look at like the very top guys, mm-hmm. they're all giants. Guys like Darren Ruff, guys like Brandon Bell, yeah. Buster Posey. They're all hitting the ball harder. Mm-hmm. The Giants also grade out well in terms of sweet spot percentage. When I was watching yeah. them, uh, it felt like every time they were hitting, it was a line drop. So even if it wasn't hit hard, it would just get into the level right over the heads mm-hmm. of the infielders. And it's and then the other thing that I think sets them apart is their plate discipline. Where if you look at their uh, their O swing percentages, which is yeah. going to be such a big stat going forward, I think swinging amount of times you swing on pitches outside of the strike zone, yeah, it's incredible. It's some stat. of the lowest in baseball. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think they they built a formula of player development, and that just helped them so much. And I think it's it's going to be the model. It, I I would not be surprised if what they're doing is. If they become a model organization for player development going forward. Yeah, I mean, and the beautiful thing about it is, is sometimes we don't realize that a baseball season is not 82 games. It's not 100. It's 162. And I think the most intriguing thing that you can tell me is, okay, Darren Ruff overall is like a 100 WRC plus player. Let's just say. But, it, okay. but if you just played him against lefties, he's a 130 W. You know, I don't yeah. know if that's true, but that's that's basically their logic is, well, if we yeah. play this guy against lefties, he's a whole new player. He's a 130 RC plus player, which is just and incredible. Works. And not only that, but it, it takes the burden of a 162 game season off of a player when you platoon guys. Yeah. It's just, it's so cool and it's so transformational. Basically to say... Okay, you know, you look at a guy in free agency and you're like, well, this guy stinks. He has a 105 WRC plus. Well, against lefties, he has a 125. So what if we, what if, if we were only to start him against lefties? Then you're getting you're that type of production. His talent level. Yeah, you're changing his talent level for a lower amount of price than signing a guy like Harper or somebody. You know what I mean? So I think that is just so. It, it's just so interesting and it's such a smart way to evaluate guys um especially if you're a low market team which the giants aren't um and they've done due due uh, due diligence to themselves because they still have a lot of money left on their payroll so they can go out and get somebody and they've got a pretty good you know system going and a core that's already established for not a lot of money so i'm we didn't get to talk about the draft but i'm 
one thing I noticed that stood out to me about the Giants was uh, how if you if are you aware of uh, Fabio at all? Fabio who? Uh, it's not a person. It's a model for grading as Fabio for him. Um, no. It's a uh, it's a model for grading pitchers, and I think it's really pitchers too. It's mostly pitchers, and it's one of the few ways. It's the closest thing we really have to like predictive metrics for college ball. Mm-hmm. And um, it's by done by a guy named uh, Matt O'Reilly. I think really really interesting stuff. And some of the top guys, like the top guy in Fabio in college, was this uh, this guy named Nicholas Sinicola out of the University of Maine. Yeah, and he went to the Giants. Hmm. Next best guy, I believe, was Matt Mikulski out of Fordham, which was a guy I was really high on before yeah, a lot remember. of people. I think I might have mentioned him to you. Yeah, he got taken in the second round by the Giants, and you look at like I think like three of the top six guys in terms of in the draft in terms of Fabio were taken by the Giants. Wow, and I'm really excited to see what they can do with those guys because there's a very good translation rate from those models into MLB success. Yeah. So I think they're definitely, I think they have a lead, they have an organization wide philosophy. They know what they're trying to do in terms of player development mm-hmm. and what they look for in players. And I'm excited to see where that's going to lead. Cause I think that's how you build sustainable success. Yeah, no, totally. So incredibly impressive from the giants, not only that, but basically outbesting the Padres and uh, the Dodgers, both who basically had an arms race this offseason um, yeah. in terms of uh, building up their teams. Um, meanwhile, the Giants... Also, I'm going to come out and say, um, I was right about Trevor Bauer in that he's not good. Not because of like anything. I'm just going to go and say that he had a... One sec. According to fan graphs... He had a 1.8 war this year. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm just going to use that to say that he sucks. Okay. And I was right. All righty. Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> That's how we're gonna do this. if he pitched the whole year, he might have won the Cy Young, but uh, we'll see. Um, yeah, I think it's a good thing he did. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, obviously, it's still. It'll be so we interesting. definitely cut out the part last time where I made the Trevor Bauer joke. So yeah, no. That, yeah, but, I'm not a huge fan of that. So, um <laughs> I, yeah, no, it'll be so interesting to see what happens with his contract. Um, I think he should definitely take a year off, um, and maybe a team will give him a chance. But um, Yeah, no, that's a weird situation all around. It's, uh, but uh, they replaced him with someone better because they're the Dodgers, not the they Scherzer. Scherzer. Yeah, no, so incredible, um, incredible move by the Dodgers. Um, that trade is just insane. Just yeah. back on it. That's, like... It's two top 30 players. In the league. And that's why I said, and I, I think you said that it was a good trade for the Nats, but I just disagree. Like, you, you got to get more than that. Like, come on. Like, come on. Those are two I don't think it's studs. easy to get more than that for a player that's a free agent at the end of the year and a player who's going to be a free agent at the end of next year. But I, I hate when people I say that in hindsight. Like, so much. well, he's, he's going to be a free agent. You can re-sign him. Re-sign him. It's... It's so, not a guarantee, though. Yeah, but... think about it. Yeah, no, it isn't a guarantee, but... I don't know. Why, why are you trading for him? If, I, don't, I don't know. Um, no, you're totally right. But I, I just really hate how that depreciates value. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's an annoying system. It's, it's just not feel like fair. Because you don't get proper value. It feels like you don't get proper value back for the stars. Yeah. Like, you know, when you think, like... And I mean, I, I still think the return's good. I'm... As much as I hate it, I still do believe in Josiah Gray. He had a really good start yesterday. He strikes out every. He strikes out a lot of guys. Like he's got good yeah, stuff. It's, it's going to be about the command and the development of the command. That's really going to determine what his ceiling is going to be. And Kevin Ruiz, I don't think he's ever going to be like. I'm not sure I see him as like a perennial All Star catcher. Agreed. But I think he's going to be a solid guy who's going to get on base a decent amount and play solid defense. Yeah. So uh, I think he's going to be like a competent starter, but not sure how much more than that. Mm-hmm. But I mean, still, when you have that much control and he's that young, there's value there. I so I hate to like, I don't know, like this is just I always just shit on the Dodgers and like I, I apologize for it, but I do think like not winning the division this year, like with the team you had, is 
especially what you did at the deadline. You know, oh, yeah, you made hilarious. those moves. No, I love it. You made those moves so you wouldn't have to play in this wild card game. Um, <laughs> so I think it's kind of a bit of a letdown not winning the division. Yeah. That's that's. I think and, Cody and, Bellinger fell off a cliff. Yeah. I think that's something you, you can't really just gloss over. He He's swinging and missing more. Uh, he's, his bat speed went down like three miles per hour. It went from like 75 to 72. And he's a guy who lives on like bat speed and smash factor, blast percentage, like all mm-hmm. those those batted ball metrics. Yeah. And, um, you know, if your bat speed's going down and you're a Cody Bellinger type player, that's going to that's gonna kill you. Yeah. And that's what happened. So I think that was, you know, a big part of it. He's going to have to get that bat speed back up if he wants to be a productive major leaguer. At yeah. The plate. He's still very good defensively. Yeah, he is but, great um, defensively. But, yeah, no, I mean, and it still seems kind of unfair to them because they won 100 games. Yeah. Because, like, you know, it's not like you can't really say they had a bad year. They, they no, had, they didn't at all. By no means. The second or third best record in baseball. By no means. But I think the but, where you can criticize them is saying, you got to win more games against the Giants. That's me, is yeah. they didn't yeah. have a very good record against the Giants. And it's just kind of inexcusable to lose games against them. Like, your team is yeah. so much better than theirs. You're pitching. You're bo- like, every – just across the board, you are superior to them. Yeah. And there's just not much of an excuse when, you know, Walker Buehler's pitching and you're facing Di Scalfani and you lose. And Di Scalfani yeah. was great this year. But you know what I mean? Like – it's just not... Yeah, you know, when you feel like you have that type of a team, it should be a gentleman. Yeah, yeah. And it just... it. I mean, it was against the lot teams. But, it was, yeah. You know, the Giants were... I mean, we talked about the Giants ad nauseum, but it was... You know, it's an interesting disconnect in terms of the rosters and how they were still able to get to pretty much the same place. Yeah. Um, both having 100 win seasons. And it's interesting... But, um, yeah. It, the, the the bright spots for this team are Muncie was great. Um, and he's hurt now, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Taylor was awesome. Um, Smith, I think, took a big step. Um, he's a great, great guy. He's just, he's just an awesome player. Um, it will be interesting, though, to see how teams play against him in the playoffs. Because if you remember, Michael, last year, the Padres and the Braves ran all over him in the playoffs. All the time, yeah. stealing, stealing, because he's not that great of a defensive catcher throwing wise. His pop well, time the, isn't very good. The other good. big thing about catcher, at least throwing out runners, that a lot of people don't consider, is that there's some arguments that it actually has more to do with the pitcher than the catcher, and essentially yeah. how long the pitcher takes to the plate. Mm-hmm. So I'd look. I haven't really done a ton of research on it, but I'd like to go back and see what pitchers they were running off of. Yeah. Because oftentimes that is even more important than the catcher. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but he's not the, – the, the interesting thing about the playoffs is you see a lot more of guys like Austin Barnes, um, Maldonado. This is when those guys shine yeah. because they are so solid. For the, uh, for the Dodgers, Matt Beatty this year? Matt Beatty doesn't catch. Um, it's, he doesn't uh, catch. I'm no, it's Too it's late. Austin Barnes and um, and Will Smith are their catchers. But okay. I'm saying guys like yeah. that, like you it's know, nine o'clock. It's past my bedtime. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, it's like you know Austin Barnes. Um, I think Darno's decent defensively, but guys like that, they yeah, just yes. shine <laughs> and they get time in the playoffs because they can throw out runners, no problem. And you know. It's not the playoffs is not a, a realm for guys who are great defensively, but Will Smith, regardless, is an insanely good hitter. And um a lot of bright spots obviously for the Dodgers. Um moving on to the Padres, uh real quick, let's talk about them. Um 